So let's get started. And I'm going to get started with a very specific area, and um, it's it's the eyes. Okay, so person here said, don't critique the eyes, they're anime inspired. Let's go in, let's go straight into the eyes and see what's up. This is no longer your 14 day challenge, by the way. You've completely deviated from the 14 day challenge principle, which is to study everything. Just because it's bold doesn't mean <laughs> it's, um, it's a 14 day challenge. The reason why he's bold is hilarious. He worked out so hard and trained so hard, he <laughs> lost all his hair. Let's go in. Anime inspired eyes cannot be crossed over this extremely um, without looking wonky. So you had this big just to drag a couple seconds ago that I'm throwing back up here. The eyes are not focused. They don't look like they're looking in the same at the same object. All right, you're outlining the eyes. You're actually using a lot lip like eyeliner. All right. So these are all issues, the core issues, line dependency issues that you have. The nose feels like a woman's nose. It does not work with the muscle structure you've given the rest of the pot, the body. I don't care if it's sourced from an anime image. You're supposed to, if you've ever seen those realistic Dragon Ball Z pictures, they're not going to draw them with these ridiculous features. They're going to give a realistic framework uh, on which they build the props and the costume that the once anime sketch what had <clears throat> then it, they turned it into a realistic rendition of it uh, so I don't care where this came from I don't care where it's sourced from the realistic rendition of it always has to pull from realistic anatomy mechanics it's not going to be an excuse alright so there are these issues before after the nose was the nose was too small it was it was very small and unnatural. The eyes weren't, weren't focused and you see this big drag? These were some of the many issues in this image and this is why a 14 day challenge has to be completed. You're supposed to complete it so you can master the mechanics of anatomy. So you can make something that looks like it can function. We can still tell it's one punch man. But you shouldn't draw on these 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 uh, these these makeup brows on his face. <coughs> um, uh, where are they? Where are they? Man, plucking eyebrows. Let me show you what this reads as. All right, see this beautiful man right here. You see this wondrous creature. This 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 beautiful thing. All right, this is the equivalent of what you drew which is this pencil thin, overly plucked, beautiful, beautiful, like makeup guru, YouTube quality eyebrows. All right, this does not match. You as the designer are responsible for putting together units of design that promote the character's personality. So this isn't a character you've designed that is, you know, a little bit feminine and likes to overgroom himself. This is One Punch Man, the manliest motherfucker you've ever seen. All right, so I'm going to give his eyebrows a little bit more volume and a little bit less groomed, like a little, so they can look a little less groomed. Again, um, just because it was anime, everyone in the anime world has pencil brows. It's easy to animate. That's why they do it. But I promote this change, make his eyebrows a little less plucked. Okay, let me use this brush. <clears throat> All right, so what I usually do is I choose the color outside and then I stroke, stroke the brush stroke down. So as you can tell, I'm a little peeved when someone gets on the community and says, hey, these, this part's off limits. Don't critique this part. I'm, we're going to critique everything in that image. No, no nothing. No holds barred. No whatever that term means. No, we're not going to, we're not going to censor the critique. In fact, it, it, the, the most problematic area in the whole face is the eyes. There's really nothing else going on anywhere else. The pro most pro problematic area is the eye structure. So what I'm doing right now is I'm throwing a shade from the eyebrows down towards the eyes, as happens in the real world. The brow bone sticks out on the skeletal level, casting some shadows. The shadow extends all the way toward the temples of the eyes. I'm also going to remove this line you have here completely. Alright, so this line here is a line dependency. 
you depend on lines when you draw eyes. The anatomy of the eye was very, very wonky. It tilted to one side because you weren't thinking of the eye anatomy and the eye mechanics as a diagram. The sphere of the eye requires, uh, the, the joint, the socket of the eye requires a sphere for the joint, for the eyeball itself, or else it wouldn't rotate. Hence the mechanics, hence the function of the eye. If it doesn't feel like it'll blink and look around, it's not going to look like it can blink and look around. It's not going to, if you're not drawing it against a, a diagram, an accurate diagram of the eye. So Google a diagram of the eye, get yourself acquainted with the anatomy that happens there. <clears throat> Completely getting rid of those lines. We don't need them. Still looks like him. Still looks like a handsome man. Still is work. It's still working. Thinking about anatomy, taking a massive close your eyes, jump feet first in, leap away from the false anatomies of anime you'll find your painting looking a lot better. The nose is much larger than it was before, which makes it look more masculine. If you don't know enough about the male and female tropes of the face and the age signatures and the distribution of weight between male and female bodies, get yourself acquainted with them. Men have large noses. <clears throat> the lips you have here are too plump, are too I guess I have never f know a good word for. They're just too big. They're they're oh no, no that's too big. Uh, they're too voluminous. Men's lips tend to be a little bit less big. If they do, they will look feminine. The man will have a feminine look if his lips are too pouty. All right, and when you want to make someone look cranky, again, you don't use anime because anime. Um, emotions are too cartoony they don't tran transfer over into the real world as well they work as good symbols which we pull from but they don't work the same way so we don't use these exact positions of the lips for our drawings this is not what we do right here these things we don't use these we don't pull from them when we dis when we when we create real expressions of the on the face again you should stop working so closely. Use the reference, only the anime image, only as a reference to what's happening in the props and the expression and the attitude. But everything else, you're responsible for finding a replacement of that anime anatomy and, f and replacing it with realistic anatomy. Or else you won't get away with it. Or else you can't, you, you'll draw a bad eye. Or else you'll draw a bad nose. Or else you draw a bad foot. Whatever it is. All right. I'm going to do the other eye. Exactly the same principle. Jump into liquify. Make it less long. Make the eye more squared. Get rid of that line. I'm going to get rid of that line by combining it with the shade underneath for the lower eyelid. You're missing anatomy that are core, uh, that are their core units of the mechanics of the eye, which is the lower eyelid. You don't just skip the lower eyelid. You have to include it in there. Again, that comes from working too closely with anime and thinking that it'll read over, it'll transfer over. <clears throat> right. So giving the, the brows some more thickness. The way you folded the eyebrows also seem a bit problematic. This area right here. This doesn't really make sense to the way eyebrows fold. He's not old, so he doesn't have, like, it's more symmetrical the younger you are, the, the, that, um, that angry Samurai Jack eyebrow. Space and darkness in between that. Men have a larger brow structure. Some highlight running across this way, going up into the forehead. His face still looks a little bit beautiful. His face looks too feminine. It doesn't look like a guy who can just want to one punch a beast fucking 18, 18 buildings tall and, and live to tell the tale. This is not the face of a man who can kill things. Um, and when we design characters and we're trying to design a realistic rendition, we're trying to hire an actor for a, a, a live action version of this, of this show, 
We're not going to hire a feminine looking man. We're not going to hire a guy who's really skinny, a guy who has really feminine features. This is what happens. You don't like it. This is what happens. That's it. This is the power of character design. We have to follow the core tropes. We have to be able to pull from them to help our design along. So what do we do to make his face look less feminine? We jump into liquify and we have to reorganize the way this face looks. So the first and most important thing is that the anime influence made you enlarge the eyes just a little bit. So I'm shrinking the eyes. I'm also going to separate the eyes from each other. Just put them a longer distance apart. Because I shrunk them. So now you know what happens when you <laughs> When you go on the critique community and you're like, don't critique this part, please. This is what happens. Get a little tough with you. The lips are a little bit small. They're a little bit feminine. They're less. They're not wide. They fit right into the triangle. And there's also not much of an expression happening. So I'm going to give him that scowl. I also don't want to constantly have his face look like he has Botox on all the time. I want to give him some wrinkles. He kind of looks a little bit derpy in the middle of battle, but when he's just finished beating something up. <laughs> Remember when he, when that guy was following him around, that um, that cyborg, really, in the, in the series? And he's like, what do you do <laughs> to, get, to become this strong? And he's like, I run six miles every day. I <laughs> do this many push-ups. And the guy's expecting him to, um, to say, like, this crazy technique, you know, this, like, like Dragon Ball Z level of training. And then <laughs> all he says is, I just run a little bit, like, basic workout stuff. And he's like, what the fuck? How did you? That's the most basic stuff. Yeah, it's a hilarious show. All right, so I'm giving him this. I wish we could just watch anime together sometimes. All right, so I gave him that, that scowl, that, that kind of bend and his cheek to give him that attitude. Still the nose feels extremely feminine to me. I'm also going to give him dark circles under his eyes. Again, we want to show that there is a difference between the normal skin of the rest of the face and the skin under the eye, which is not normal skin. It ages fast, it moves fast, it's, just, it's in the middle of a massive joint in the body. And I want to show that he has age, he has experience behind him. I'm designing a character that is brutally strong. He's not going to have perfect camera ready eyes. That's how you create convincing looking characters. You don't work directly with the anime. If you work directly with it, you will not draw a realistic version of anything. Before. After. Okay. <clears throat> then the cheekbones. We want to show that he's got bone structure. He's skinny, so he's got bone structure. So this means we're going to see a little bit of that that secondary light source move along. That secondary light source touches a little bit of the nose on the side. And this cast, the light that shines from here casts a shadow on this cheek, so we got to make these cheeks symmetrical. Get those jowls. No. Just a little more. <clears throat> okay. Then I need to finish off these shadows. I stretched a shadow out of this side. I'm going to have to finish it off on this side. So his eyebrows can have the shape of the anime. They can have that long shape. They can have the realistic version of that anime. But they should not look like they've been plucked. They should not look like may maybe it's Maybelline eyebrows. Bring some highlight on the side of the nose where the light source comes in. Now this looks like a big old bald hunky one punch man. Also the head of a human isn't completely round. It's got bumps to it. It's got a squareness to it. So these go up this way. There's a corner and then these do a little 
a little curve. So the, the, the most circular dome in the whole business is at the very top, but everything else is very squared. You can make it a little bit more cranial than usual because, yeah, his head is really hilariously round. But again, it's an animate, easy to animate. If you want to create a realistic version of it, you got to go that way. The last reason why his face looks feminine is because the jawline. Again, working too closely with the anime. And then, of course, the fact that the lips you drew were just too too dark. It looked like rip lipstick, red as lipstick. All these reasons are the why your rendition was problematic. Tiny nose, it looked like a woman. And what happens when you will work too closely with anime is you'll you'll work with you'll draw and accidentally draw a woman because anime is all elf all the time. Large eyes, small nose, small mouth. They try to invert that with male characters in anime, but this is problematic. The eyes were the most problematic spot in the entire painting. The eyes were extremely feminine. They were the eyebrows are extremely feminine. You had that space under the eye. It, it does not read like that. When you transfer something over, you have to replace all of that stuff you did with realistic, a realistic rendition. Sharpen and sharp mask. You have to replace that anime anatomy with actual mechanics, with real anatomy. Okay? So never, never post anything on the Google community and say, don't critique this part. I will make a point of critiquing that part for you because there's, there's, unless you're at a point where you no longer need anyone's critiques and you can find your own mistakes and you don't need to post on a Google community, <clears throat> unless you're at a point where there aren't any mistakes in your work, then you can say that. You can post it and say, I'd rather not get a critique. This is just just, just for gallery purposes that I'm posting, and that's forbidden in the Google community. Everyone, every single aspect of your painting is subject to critique. Do not assume immunity. Always be open to the possibility that what you think is the best part of your painting could possibly be the worst or very at least be problematic. Everyone write that back to me if you can. <laughs> Always assume nothing looks as good as you think it does in your painting. It will make you more open to changes which will lead you to better drawings. And if and if someone told me a long time ago a way to make my drawings look better, I'd jump on it. I'd jump on it and never let go. Take advantage of these opportunities where you, you know exactly how to find the issues with your paintings. And deal with them. This is not a 14 day challenge submission. You've made a masterpiece out of it. If this was a 14 day challenge submission, it would be just as problematic as as, as if it was a masterpiece. It, we, we still find the same issues. If this wasn't punch, One Punch Man and you were still working on uh, whatever li visual library knowledge you have of the face and you, you managed to pull this through, if someone else drew these and they intended to go for a man, I would still make the same changes. It doesn't matter that it's coming from One Punch Man. Okay? <clears throat> the right eye is a little bigger. Um, I, 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 I don't see it. Which My right or your right? Be open to changes. May always assume nothing looks as good as you think it does. Thank you, Mo. His right ear looks like he has major cauliflower ear. Okay. <clears throat> always assume what you think is the best part of your painting. Maybe the worst part to go another person's eyes. Thank you, Antares. Um, I actually remember something from another critique about lighting and oh my god, it did so much. Nice, Caterpillar. Assume your shit is shit. <laughs> How do you balance that with anxiety? Uh, what do you mean, WAP? Can you elaborate a little bit? I like to discuss how we feel when we draw because it affects the choices we make with our brush. <laughs> Don't let your dreams be dreams. <laughs> Always assume that everything doesn't look as good as you think it does in your painting and stuff. Thank you, Alexandra. Is the 14-day challenge just for people doing the course? No, it is not. I offer private tutoring for a two-week period for the 14-day challenge mediated by me for every single day. Yes, but the 14-day challenge is open to anyone who wants to do it. All they have to do is post on the Google community. If you don't know where that is, go to my website, isterac.com. On the top right, you'll see a bunch of, bunch of links just click on the G plus one, it'll take you to the community, which is where everyone posts their work. 
<clears throat> All right, the shoulders don't match up with the neck. Yes, absolutely, I forgot to mention that. Um, the body, the whole body, the whole body is not masculine, it's feminine. It's very effeminate. So, I'm just going to just increase this all the way. I mean, if you're running six miles or three miles a day, however much he said, and, you, and you're, you're doing like, you're doing eight whole dumbbell curls and bicep curls, and then, you, and then you're doing like, you know, like 15 jumping jacks, damn, your, your, your shoulders will be a little wider than that. And if you're a man. Male proportions are very different from female proportions. Weight is at the top, female weight is at the bottom. Um, before, after. Very, very slender, very feminine. Very feminine man, and that's what happens when you work too closely with anime. Alright, this image here. When you are doing a character design, please don't have a claustrophobic... Actually, I'll just increase so I don't really lose resolution, but please don't work with a claustrophobic canvas. If you're running out of space, it's very easy to just add space on top. Okay? Now that said, uh, this character here, I think color choice could be different, but you can't really critique color choice. What you can critique is the fact that the entire um, mech design, this whole bodysuit, is really curved. Where this is supposed to work as a as a, an extension of your anatomy, yes, but it's not an it's not a curved extension of your anatomy. It's a geometric extension of your anatomy. It's like robotic anatomy attached to yours. That's the big premise. That's the big storyline behind every design um, that comes with a bodysuit. Every bodysuit, every armor design. Armor is not designed to um, allow the boobs to sag like that. It isn't designed to. Um, it's, it's supposed to be practical. Now that said, a lot of people break the rules about practical armor, especially for females, but I think what you're doing here is one, two, symmetrical, three, really curved, really organic looking design. It feels like it's made of fabric. It doesn't feel like it's the armor that it's supposed to be. And because she's so bulky, we have this bulky plus really, really effeminate card captor Sakura colors. <clears throat> I don't know if any of you know that anime, but it's like the best anime ever. I grew up with it. Taught me how to draw. But anyway, um, uh, taught me how to sketch. Anyways, but uh, these colors are really girly colors. They are colors that you would use for. Let's see. Let's see what. What. Let's see what this looks like in the commercial world. All right, Nami, Champion Splash. Let's see the colors they use there. So there's this one. This is the one I really want to focus on. And these colors here, very passive, closed gestures, sitting down, really, really pretty pink gestures. And we've got all these pretty purples, sparklies, all these pretty things. Yeah, we've got the organic greens that she probably is like a, a sea nymph or whatever. And then we go to characters like um, Kale Champion. Is that is Kale? Why would they name her Kale? It's a ve fucking leafy vegetable. I don't even know what it is. Uh, splash. Like, weren't they thinking, like, kale is an actual thing? Kale, okay, there we go. Kale with a Y. <clears throat> when we think about her colors, all right, their armor, they're very close to yours, but look at the difference. Really geometric design, really geometric. It does not look at that peak. It's very, it's like a pyramid peak. It's very geometric. It's not organic at all. It's deliberately it's deliberately jagged. It's supposed to be more jagged. Now the colors are very similar to the colors you chose, but they're more primary colors. They're more, they're colors that reflect, they're more royal colors is what I'm trying to say. You're using a very grayed out, washed out, pastel combination of yellow and pink and beige. Pink and beige, as soon as you say those words, I'm just like naked, vulnerable, um, fleshy, uh, this is the colors you would use if you want to draw a really pretty girl, like a siren or, or, or an Aphrodite kind of deal. I would not use these colors here. They're very baby colors. And that's the simple truth. Walk through the female toy section, like the girls toy section in Walmart, and then walk through the boys toy section, and then just walk through, you know, sporting goods. Um, you're going to find more primary royal colors in the male, in the, the boys' kids section of toys, 
and the sporting goods section because they're just they're, they're they're they come from boys boys toys come from cars and other stuff we use day to day which are the colors that we put on everything the colors you would see on a car is probably the colors you want to use on any kind of armor it's deep colors black colors when you see a green car it just feels so unnatural because it, you know we expect them to be kind of more regal colors because that's our our you know we compare a horse to a car anyway so you know what i'm saying you you have to have a practical color that reflects the role of the unit we're coloring colors come with their own tropes all by themselves colors have their own place in society with their own definitions and their own rules now a lot of people when i critique their work refute and say yeah uh, this is my choice i knew this but i broke the rule i have a feeling this wasn't intentional I have a feeling you were just going for something a little girly. What I recommend is an eval reevaluation of the colors you chose because what you're going for is this. And she's very, very masculine in her position. She's extremely strong. She looks like she's a tank. She's not messing with anybody. Like she, no one's going to mess with her and she's not fucking around. But she's got this really pink, bubbly, fairy princess colors that I would see on something like a Nami or another girly princess. Um, I would not see these colors on this kind of character, which she is. This is the other splash where they use these colors. Very, very regal, strong colors. No pink to be seen except on her face, which is fine. That's her skin tone. <clears throat> All right? Very pale colors. Um, kale splash. Where is that that one really really good one right here again with those beautiful colors but this one right here probably my favorite all-time League of Legends drawing and these colors are just they're just gorgeous turquoise and the gold and the deep bronze colors and the blue these are real colors that I that I would see in a car I would see in in in, in, in any kind of metallic surface is some really cool mechanism which is what body armor is it's an it's an, a non-organic extension of your anatomy built together with geometric shapes with a geometric purpose they're supposed to work but also be really strong now armor isn't bendable it's, it's just a really unbendable material it's really strong that's why it's armor so it's pieced together plate by plate while this looks like it's just a suit put together um, or some parts of it look like they're very organic and fabricy, which doesn't feel like armor so a lot of design choices could have been changed um, the sy symmetrical pose I guess you can get away with that for a character design sheet. It's really, they don't really care about the pose. The hairstyle feels a little, um, again, it's again, it's just your choice. These are just design choices I recommend, but altogether the color choices are no longer my taste speaking. It's not my taste critiquing your color choice. It is the purpose, the function of those colors. The fact that armor is supposed to be um, just made with some really really uh, nondescript colors colors that really don't stand out or deliberately stand out but stand out in a way that is still heroic heroic colors is what you want to use on armor if there's someone wearing green ass yellow ass armor um, at that point it's a deliberate style choice but even that color itself is intimidating but this color is not intimidating especially because she's standing so masculine so strong um, so uh, ready to kick ass, especially because her expression is not, it doesn't have any mercy in it. <clears throat> and we're seeing these pink colors, these really baby colors, baby clothes colors, like baby clothes. Like, let's Google baby clothes. Baby clothes. Images. Lots of that color. All right, here, here, here. There's lots of that baby pink color. All right, here. Mostly in girls' clothes, I guess. Oh, okay. And, um, so don't use these colors on armor. It will not work. <clears throat> As you can see, learning how to draw isn't just about learning how to draw stuff realistically. There's that guy again. Um, it's about, uh, knowing design, like being more familiar with design, being de deliberate with your colors, knowing exactly which of these colors here, exactly what they represent in different areas of the map of the color picker. So over here, what does this color speak? What does this color speak? What, where this, what do I think when I see this color? Like, what are the connotations or denotations that come with? Um, is that even right? Are those the right words to use? We have to look it up later. But what are the color? What words come with these colors? And when I'm designing my character, do I really want to use this baby pink, fleshy, naked uh, princess color?
Again, if you really have to stick to it, it's at the end of the day, you can do whatever you want with your painting, but it's not a good choice. It will not read. It will not pop. It will be a very, very odd color to use. <clears throat> anime gets, a gets away with a lot of stuff, so don't say I've seen these colors in anime. Anime is cartoony. Anime is, is, it can do anything it wants and it can get away with it because it has its own world of anatomy, it has its own mechanics, it has its own universe, it has its own physics. Um, not real live physics, but you know what I mean. Okay, um, so we're really jumping across everywhere today, but let me see what everyone's saying. <coughs> By Princess Peach. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't use Princess Peach colors on a girl that's about to bash a guy's skull in. Brienne of Tarth wasn't walking around with, with a, with, <clears throat> she's got a realistic rendition of it. She wasn't walking around with really bright, girly colors like, like Marjorie Tyrell was, all right? She was walking around with these really pretty dresses, really baby pink, baby blue, I mean, colors, just really pretty all the time. She was always really pretty very earthy pretty colors sometimes she was always wearing blue though I think that's what her character had always been wearing but uh, when we think of her her colors are, are more you know armor more intimidation more function less paint involved in, in putting it together and this is the character you were drawing alright probably one of my favorite characters but yes Colors are also a big aspect of design. Make sure you're choosing them right. Um, over here we have many levels. You have blocks determining different unit, the distances of depth between each unit. So this object is in the distance. This object is in distance as well, but not as far as this object. Yet they say that they share the exact same values. This is a big no-no. When we have objects that are of different distances, they do not share the same values. Write that back to me. <clears throat> objects of different distances do not share the save the same because someone said long live Brian they do not share the same values denotation is more strict definition and connotation is more like an impression thank you Megan yeah um, yeah they, the connotation of the colors I want Isarag to critique my life so she can give me good advice for it <laughs> <laughs> I'm an art specialist. I'm not a life support of your life. I'm not a life coach. Uh, let's see what everyone. No pastel colors on armor. Never. Really bad choice. And I see all these um, yeah, these these characters designed in that one new game that everyone's crazy about. Um, that fucking really bright ass game with all the bright ass characters. I think you're forgetting its name. It was from last night. Um, but yeah, it, they have it, it's very deliberate when they make that really girly looking character have those girly looking colors on their armor. And it's usually backed up by some good primary colors. Um, objects of different distances don't have the same value. Don't share the same color or say, share the same values or share the same anything. I mean, they can share the same color, but it's more um, faded version of that color. So the biggest issue here, the diagnosis, the no, no, the, it, not the diagnosis, yeah, the diagnosis, no, not the diagnosis, the the, the ailment, the <laughs> the illness of this image, is. I like to think of myself as a as a as a canvas doctor, <clears throat> not canvas doctor, painting doctor. The issue of this image here is that it looks flat. This looks very very flat. I don't feel like I can just, you know, walk my way into the distance and then just eventually disappear. I don't feel like I can do that, right? But I, what will make this happen is if we create different contrast and darkness levels. So the most foreground object, if there was a foreground object, would be very, very dark. It should be very dark because it's in a silhouette position. It's in a silhouette state. It should go all the way down to black. There isn't much light happening here. <clears throat> All right, maybe it might have a little bit of a an illumination on one side, very very faint, just like that, because the light's coming in on one side. But that's it. That's all you get. This object here, I'm gonna try to lasso it. <clears throat> Failed. 
this should have more contrast. So it would image adjustments contrast. The contrast should go up because it's closer to us than that object over there. And then the brightness. I'll use levels. Right, because the fire is directly beside it. This object here looks like it's in the exact same vicinity as that one. So I'm going to try to do the exact same thing. I'm going to fix the contrast of that part. And what this does is that it makes it feel like all of these are in a different distance compared to the what? What are they, what are they distant from in different levels that causes their visibility to decrease? What are they distant from? What, is the, what are the two major areas they're distant from? What are the two major things? Zero, and then contrast goes up. And levels, bring that down. And saturation down. Okay. This part over here should be a little less contrasted. Right over here, it's more in the distance. So now we've got all this depth, and this area here should be a little lighter. It should not reach no man's darkness in that distance. Neither should this. It's a pretty bright light, so you're either having layers of silhouettes and you lose everything and it's a really bad situation to draw everything, because typically in this light source, the only thing you can do is just have a bunch of silhouettes. You wouldn't really have atmospheric fade. Atmospheric fade is a cheat that we're using it's always going to be a cheat that we're using. This is how it should look in this kind of lighting. This is all a silhouette. We are in the dark part. We are in the shadow of the greater objects and the light is behind them. So this is what typically should happen, but this is an illustration. It's supported by a cartoony kind of impression. So we break the rule by using the rules of depth here to give the image some depth. This object has the same contrast as this object. This one is very close to the camera, which means this one here also gets darker. Damn it. <clears throat> okay, so now we have different levels. As for the entire composition, as for the um, the entire image itself, I think this whole block right here is just it's just it's not really helping the image. It's just working as a big. I'm not sure what it is. Is it a cocoon? I mean, I really had to look before I saw it as a cocoon. This background here is too it's too dark to show anything. So maybe you can lighten that up. <clears throat> the light source, camera and light source, excellent. Those are the two points of distance that we measure this object against. Those are the main, those are the main areas. To make the light more present in the image so it really feels like it can illuminate all this, you can, and you can quote me on this, you can hit no man's land in your painting as long as it's hitting an, a light source. As long as that no man's land is a light source. If you're using a, like a really bright light, this is no man's land by the way, this here and this deep black and this deep white. These are the areas you can never paint with. Do not paint with white and do not paint with black. You are not basically, you're basically not painting anymore when you do that. But you can hit, like right here, look how bright this is, all the way up in this top, most, the most high layer. And this is because this is fire, so it's a light source. So it has the right to kind of distort and have that much light coming out of it. You can take a photograph of light. It'll mess up your camera and you'll probably mess up the photograph, but you can take a photograph of a bunch of light. It'll just be a big, bright, unusually white shade that's all your camera is going to read. Okay. So this part here where there's the cocoon, I would just shroud that in a little bit more darkness. His silhouette is really bulky and it doesn't really feel like intimidating because it's just one big ball. What's more intimidating to you, you as the viewers right now, what is more intimidating? A circle or a triangle? <clears throat> um, you can use no man's land only if it's the light source. Thank you, Antares. As long as the depths of no man's land are really light areas and stuff, it works out. Yeah. 
not really light areas. I'm not talking about highlights on the face. I'm talking about a light source. If you're taking a picture of a fire or a candle or a lamp, that's the only time you're going to use no man's land. That's it. It's not on light areas of clothing. It's not on light areas of anything. The triangle, exactly. What's more intimidating, this or this? This or this? This or this plus this? This is more intimidating. This is more... The circle is not intimidating. The circle is basically the, the symbol in my writing from the figure drawing book. This is a closed gesture. It really, it, it's the most static thing I could draw. It is the most boring, sideless. Uh, it's, it's really an awesome, useful tool. The sphere is an awesome, useful tool, but it's boring as fuck. And if you were, your silhouette is just one big circle with two wings, it's just going to look like one big circle with two wings and a couple of details on it. What you have to do is think in geometry, think in shapes. When you have to deal with a silhouette, think in shapes. How can I make this guy two wings, massive wings? How can I draw him without drawing him? So I'm probably going to throw two triangles, and I'm going to work from this exact diagram I'm drawing. Like, I'm not even fucking around. I will use this. I will use this in the drawing. I will superimpose this on my sketch and fix my sketch along it or start this as the base of my sketch. So what is more... So I'm probably going to do something like that or do something like um, like that or something creepily asymmetrical. Maybe his head is tilting to a point or do these major geometries and then do a silhouette that looks amazing and uh, a gesture line that looks amazing as a silhouette. Um, maybe follow it with some more trying. So his so his uh, his sleeves. If I was his victim, I'd probably remember his sleeves the most. Maybe his wings. Yeah, his wings. So I throw more triangles over here, and then I I know this is just his cloak. So his cloak is probably going to reach like some sort of greater triangle shape. Maybe on two sides. So this is how you make something look intimidating and also have an amazing read from a distance. Look at the navigator. This would read amazingly in the distance. What you have is a blob. You have a blob with wings. This is not going to read as anything. So let's edit this guy according to these changes I just made. Let's make him a little bit more a little bit more freaky. I'm going to extend his his sleeves this way. Gonna make his wings, um, his wingspan a little bit more broken and thin, less lush. All right, and we'll, you'll see what happens to that silhouette. Um, maybe I'll make his hair fly up. Okay. Um, his cloak. I want it to reach. A lower level. Don't make his cloak so um, so see-through. It really doesn't scare me anymore. Now look at what happened to the painting when we made those changes. The exact same character, but we broke up these pieces into smaller pieces. This painting is more movement in it, more variety, more geometry, and less of a blob and more of a, something that was really happening. All you have to do now is, I think, you just have to rethink some design choices. You have to bring in a little bit more detail. These stalactite, or I don't know which ones are, what are they called when they come from the top, but stagmites, stalag, I don't know. But these ones up here, they, um, they're all the same exact shape. You have a real opportunity to, to break the silhouette right here and throw in some really scary shapes that could be pointing at the camera too, because we're from the bottom, so we're in a worm's eye view. Everything points to us in three, three quarter, I mean in three point perspective. You have so many chances here to really mess around. Maybe throw in a character in the foreground who's really scared and is hiding away with a bunch of other characters and, and they're trying to save their buddy. <clears throat> and they're like in a dungeon or something like that. Now you have a storyline. Now you have the movement, the eye movement, the, the line of sight moving around. Okay? <clears throat> Round is good when you're working with organic shapes. Round is the way to go. Geometry is the science behind everything that you have to have, even if you have organic shapes. Curves are great. Uh, spheres and circles are a great way to have some real curves in anything you're drawing. Curves can also be used for a line of sight. Uh, the, uh, the golden ratio, uh, the, the, spir the, 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 the spiral, the golden spiral is one big curve. 
I'm not saying circles are bad. I'm saying don't use circles if you're going to, you know, the whole vocal point is going to be on this one character and it's just a circle with wings and a couple of details. It's not going to work. We really want to see this guy as the king that dom the, you know, the, the, the king that dominates this dungeon. So if there's something behind him that, you know, there's, there's light behind him revealing his menacing shape, the, the final shadow you see before you die, it, it can't be a circle. I'm not going to get scared if a Jigglypuff runs at me. I'm going to get scared if uh, Nosferatu runs at me. Okay? <laughs> Uh, looks so much more striking in the navigator. Yes, it does. And if it passes here, it will pass in your painting. You just gotta push the details just a little bit more. Right? This is exactly the, the template I used. I built it with just a bunch of geometric shapes. And this dude here, this person about to kill him with the cloak, this person is gonna kill them and save the day. And you can really, really go nuts with this No Man's Land fire because it's a fire and it, it, and he's it's reaching right behind him. And it's really strong and he's just this menacing son of a bitch. And then I'm going to burn on top. And we're just trying to get the silhouette to happen. And then you can add details on top. Whatever you have to do to make this a striking focal point. And contrast usually is a great place to do, to do this. All right. <clears throat> I drew a bunch of butts today, I uploaded them to the community. Um, uh, stalactites hang tight to the ceiling. Oh, thank you, Megan. Megan is a, is a genius. <clears throat> stalactites hang tight to the ceiling. Oh, very smart. I love that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Why are you hating on blobs? <laughs> Do you identify as a blob? As a Doritos uh, Cool Ranch flavored bl blob? Is that what you identify as? Give him glowing eyes. Oh, that'd be so cool if you gave him glowing eyes. <clears throat> yeah. So just remember, if you remember Digimon, remember the baby versions of Digimon? Oh my god, they were just a bunch of blobs. So, like, unintimidating. That Baby Digimon images. They're just circles. I mean, they're just circles. No matter how you think about it, they're just different variations of a circle. It's not very scary. But then you think about um, what's that? Uh, Mega Digimon. I forget what the. And these guys, they just look. Their silhouettes do not look friendly. This guy here. All these crazy dudes. My favorite one was Anjumon. Oh my god, I had the biggest crush on Anjumon. <laughs> oh my god, as a kid, if you got me an Anjumon um, figure, like action figure, and like you got me action, like you know, stickers, and you got me like an art book, I would just love you forever. Uh, Anjumon was my favorite thing in the world <clears throat> for a while, and then it became Vegeta. Anyways, um, yes, remember these design rules. Where there's a lot of design power in circles. There's a lot of design power in color. There's a lot of design power in everything that could possibly sit in your canvas. And if you want a beautiful composition, you have to think about all of, everything that goes into it. You can't think, oh, that's just, you know, I'll deal with that. That's easy. Shapes are easy. Colors are easy. There, nothing is easy. Everything has to be thought of. Everything has to be deliberate. You're an, you're an art director. You're a movie director. And everything in that camera is there for a reason. Nothing in a, in a movie shot is accidental. Everything is deliberate. Everything is reviewed. The tights come down and the mites go up. My geography teacher used to say that. The tights come down. Stalag tight. Stalag mite. Mites go up. The tights come down. Yeah. Uh, why, what? <clears throat> Start as circles, then evolve to edgy monsters. Yeah. Alright. So I'm going to close this. And this person has, oh, I just wanted to do one thing about, about this painting here. Beautiful, beautiful, um, uh, form studies. Just amazing work. 
you can draw a sink. Like, look, look, this is what form study does for you. It makes you able to draw a sink. Like, you didn't have to go and get take a picture of a sink and do a still life of an actual sink. You looked at the geometry, you broke it down, you broke down the anatomy of the geometry of that sink. I know it's a mouth pull, mouthful, mouth pull, oh my god, mouthful, but um, the form study has changed my life forever, and I will always assign them in private tutoring, and I will always encourage students to use them. This line right here is just, I, I, it's really required, it's a cast shadow. The light is coming from a specific direction in the, in the, in the image, and we really need to see that cast shadow. You need a couple more edges, even though it's curved, even though all this is curved, it doesn't mean that the, that the anatomy of this geometry is exempt from cast shadows. We still need them. Cast shadows are consistent no matter where you go, what you do, who you are what you what you identify as which washrooms you go in cash shadows cash shadows happen period they are not something you pick and choose as a prop in your image the more you have of them the more that you, the more nice your image will look all right cash shadows are not optional everyone write that back to me if you really want to improve you really want to take your art to the next level Think about form studies. Think about breaking the unit you're trying to draw down into a geometry and trying to find the cast shadows in there and drawing them in your work, having the bravery. Look at this bravery. God, look, it's beautiful. Not to blend. The bravery not to blend. That's where it happens, okay? <clears throat> what a senpai. We need them cast shadows. Somebody needs to draw a sink man to commemorate the anatomy of this. <laughs> She's on drawn four years. Um, cast shadows are not optional. Physics are universal. Physics are not selective. Thank you, Henry. <clears throat> cast shadows are not optional. Be brave and drawn. Be brave. Be brave. Don't be a coward. Be brave enough not to blend. Look at this gorgeousness. Perfection. I couldn't have done it better myself. This is wonderful work. I love this. One issue is that this could have been a little less bright. You're on the bright side. Bright areas, bright surfaces only can go so dark, can only go so dark. So you have to brighten this just a little bit. Um, even if it's a crack, whatever, if it's not on this side, it can't have this side shadows. You cannot share values between plates. Just, just, just gorgeous, just fucking pretty. Like, I will just, oh my god, I'll just put this on my wall and just, and just look at it all day. This is, you know in a magazine, you know in movies when someone's looking through a magazine, it's like a dirty magazine. <laughs> and the person's holding the magazine and then they let the magazine like fall into larger pieces because it's one large image like of a tall naked lady or whatever <laughs> if there was a magazine I would I would I would open the whole panel and look at this <laughs> this is some sexy form right here let me tell you um, Sarek I diffused the cast shadows because of the curves <clears throat> uh, right here the curves don't change anything the curves don't change anything. The curves will not make cast shadows less sharp. Cast shadows, as I said, are, they don't care. Physics is not selective according to the kind of object you're casting. A cast shadow will still happen. <clears throat> oh, you drew this Oreo. Okay. Yeah, I don't know who draws this stuff. I just like what I, what I see. Yeah, that sink, yo. Look at that. Look at that sink booty. Someone make us direct propaganda posters. Be brave. Don't blend. <laughs> Sounds very racist, doesn't it? Sink best waifu. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but don't uh, do not do this. In fact, um, they might be a little diffused because it's, it's a surface area. So this might happen. Hey, fuck. I didn't do, got rid of the deselected thingamajig. Um, this might happen right here, which is get which which is basically just the cast shadow getting diffused along a bright surface, but that's it. That's all that would happen. Right? <clears throat> yeah. This this value and this value would not share the, this surface and this first surface would not share the same value. Look at this contour. This is not curved. This is not curved because your contour isn't curved. Your silhouette, your cross section of that of that anatomy of that geometry is not curved. So this means that this edge travels all the way down there. Okay. So this cast shadow is, this, this light is really bright. It's going to cast a sharp shadow. 
running across. So if it does anything, it just moves across that sudden change. So it does that, maybe. The cache shadow does something like this and then connects back to its source. But it would not change surface. It would not share values. It would not get curvy. It would not do all of that. It'll diffuse towards the end. Right here, it'll start to feather. But the closer it gets to the object casting it, this surface area right here, this little bit that you're showing off as a bend, this also brightens up and turns into something else. Okay? This edge needs to happen right here. Not so sharp because it is curved as you're suggesting. Just like that. <coughs> <laughs> she roasted me on stream. <laughs> um, yeah, young Kush, <laughs> that fucking name. Uh, just behave yourself. Looks like the Dota logo with the crack details. Mm hmm. Them forms, goddamn, <laughs> Mark. Yes, I was just, I was just drooling over this one right here. Really pretty. Um, same mistake here, Oreo. Uh, do not make this go that light. This value cannot come anywhere near this value. These do not share values at all. There is a 90 degree angle separating them. Light does not bend. I am so happy I invented form studies. <laughs> okay. This over here. This this would never go this dark. This would never ever go this dark. It is not gonna happen. What what is what is what is this what is sourcing this? Unless someone got paint and only painted this part of the crack. <laughs> crack. Um, it would not go that dark. All right. This value and this value face the same direction. They share that they share the same value. Uh, this bounce light will diffuse this whole upper area. This whole upper area will not be as dark as this lower area. This lower area does not get any bounce light because it is not directly beside any any plates. Yeah, there's the room. The room is already diffused. The general diffuse that we can't track down. This is not pitch black. That's the room's that's the room's fault. That's the room's doing. But as for that little aura you had down here, that's that's not gonna happen. There's no plate beside it to cause that. Lots of rules you can take on in a form study, studying form for form's sake, without having to add the label of a portrait or anything else to it. It's a great, great way to study. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.